the conversation between Henry, Henny, and George uh, is one of the most amusing where they have the Beethoven rage over a penny over them. And George especially becomes increasingly more aware that rage over a penny is, is mocking them as they're speaking. Uh, they also have some interesting conversations. That's where Henry posits uh, greater weathers of of Beethoven or something. Yeah. Something to that extent that, that artists see things on, on a different scale than the rest of society. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that when he listens to Beethoven, that's sort of how he feels he sees it then. He sees it through how Beethoven sees the world. Or well, hears the world. Well, the, the brother, George, uh, I mean, Henry has a soliloquy. I'm just skimming through it. Henry has a soliloquy. But most of the play is basically Henry and Danny talking at some point and whatnot. And we get a few... We get the McLuhan poem uh, that that is put in there. We get we get the brother uh, uh, afterwards. He comes back later as death too. Yeah, or, or, or he's, he's dead, like or whatever whatever, whatever he's supposed to represent. Um, he's he's more of a an everyman, if you will, than Henry, because Henry Henry is probably a Joey, although he's probably smart enough, as portrayed in the this uh, play, to not waste his time trying to be an artist because yes. he just doesn't really have it. But he, ha he because he knows that the Beethovens have the greater weathers and more, more mortals have the less weathers. So the, the title about the, uh, these lesser weathers of Beethoven is, 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 is presumably Henry's way of trying to say that even on his best days or his worst days, Beethoven is still probably somehow above them. And it, it's, it's an equation in the mind of someone who doesn't quite get it as to to what those who do have it, uh, greater depth, greater intellect, greater talent, uh, must have to feel. And uh, uh, I know that's that's something that a lot of artists have too. I know Jessica sometimes, like we were out walking today, or sometimes when she's in her moods, uh, we'll, she'll be asking like, you know, what do non-creative people do when they don't, when they have a lot of time? They just sit around, they, they watch porno, they just play video games, or they, you know, they just talk on the phone or text each other endlessly. They, I, it's like, for me, any free time I get, I'm writing, or I'm talking to you, or I'm doing this, that, or the other thing, uh, other than the stuff I have to do, like mow the lawn, or, or whatever it might be. But, uh, you know, what you have to then wonder what people who are not creative must think about the creative people. They're probably like, why do they spend all their time doing all this? Well, that, if you want to know why a Beethoven's a Beethoven, or a Dan Schneider's a Dan Schneider, or uh, a Stanley Kubrick is a Stanley Kubrick, is because they're constantly thinking about these things. The, these things have to be in their mind. Uh, and so that's that's sort of, I guess, the, the main thrust of that play. Um, and the Henry character is, uh, as I said, a, a good one because... There is something about him that uh, uh, isn't that it, we we don't there's there's aspects to him that certainly are not sketched about and that's when you do a play especially a drama that's I think that's about thirty thousand so it's 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 a fairly long drama compared to most I mean thirty thousand it's uh, let me see how many pages typewritten is it here it's around the it's around the length of Hamlet uh, yeah. So two, let's see here, word count, 32, so it's 32,000 uh, words, and it's how many pages here? Uh, 32,000 words. 59, so that would be 60, so 120, uh, so that's 120 pages, 120 minutes, so that's about a, a two-hour play, um, you know, given the standard stuff, but so say a two-hour play, that's pretty... Uh, that's that, that's a fairly long chunk, although it's not nearly as long as some of the, the couple the first couple of plays I did. But that, when you mentioned the McLuhan poem, uh, Danny has a scene with George where he's talking about writing mediocre to so so poems, but he just knows he has something within him, that kernel that only he can see, that he can bring out great art like and then the McLuhan poem comes out because he wants to show Henry exactly what became of him, that he's the best poet now at this time. Yeah, well, uh, and, and that's that's one of the things you can do. You can go back in time, back and forth in time. And I play with that in a lot of the, the plays. Uh, um, uh, the Henry character, the, the, the putting to music with the Beethoven, that 
I mean, th there's a lot of things. But uh, as I've been doing some of these last few plays, I I've been trying to get away from using music all the time and and, and do other things. So you don't want to you don't want to go back to the same thing. You want to try different things, different lighting techniques, uh, putting things in different ways, um, mixing this and that, having uh, the. Uh, a, few, a couple of the last plays that I did had a bit more absurdist elements in them. Um, you know, the poem I did on my mother's death has this this woman that only she can see, but there's no actor playing it. But she she yeah, can the see the woman in blue. Uh, we had the, the the play with the guy wandering in the hotel and and uh, uh, trying to re not remember what has happened to, in his past. Uh, the one after that one, uh, an eye other than human. Uh, I don't know if you've read that one. That has that's yes. that's the Twilight Zone one with people from my real life, uh, you know, acting uh, almost like memories within a brain. The, the the two halves of the brain. I'm trying to do that, but anyway. So the the Henry Miller play is, is one of my favorite plays because Henry Miller is one of my all time favorite people. He he's certainly in the top ten of people that uh, I liked or loved over the years, uh, just as a human being and. Uh, the fact that I found out probably a handful of years after his death that he had died sometime in the early O's, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I do those bioramas and, and I've tried here and there. Uh, I'll probably try maybe once I hopefully get another new job in the next early part of next year, maybe try around again to interview some other people. But a lot of people don't want to talk about themselves. He would have been interesting to interview. Um, but uh, the time's gone. But that's what great a great artist can do. People who could watch this play 500 years from now uh, in a theater around Jupiter, the one of the moons of Jupiter, will be able to know that this man existed. Uh, and this is that was his real name, Henry Miller. I don't. I think I call him Henry Crawford Miller. I don't remember what his real middle name was, but I just gave him a middle name just to. I don't know. Make